Hey guys, welcome to CryoFX YouTube channel. Today's video is on cryo systems and CO2 stage effects, also called CO2 special effects or CO2 effects in short. Now you can obviously see where we're at. So what I'm gonna be covering on this video is really not where we're at, but more importantly, a couple of important things that deal with cryo systems. What are those? How a cryo system is set up, of course, the safety surrounding cryo systems, also two types of systems you have your co2 special effects system and of course your liquid nitrogen effect system and co2 jets versus handheld cryo guns and last but not least one of the more important things that you need to be aware of so that you get the best operating system inside versus outside we're obviously outside but there also is an inside as well. So we're gonna take you in and we're gonna show you the different fundamentals of cryo systems in five, four, three, two, one. How is a cryo system or cryo stage effects actually set up? We're gonna do a general overview and it starts with this. You wanna mount your CO2 jet machines where they're gonna be mounted at. So for instance, if this was the setting that you're gonna be using, then you would mount them either underneath the LED screens or pointed on the stage upwards. So either coming down towards the crowd or on the stage pointed upwards, those are the two general areas where they're gonna be mounted. Of course, there's some other options that this particular club has done, but we're not gonna cover those on this video. So you wanna mount the jets where you're gonna be mounting them first. Then you run the hoses from where those jets are over to where your tanks are gonna be. Generally, you wanna keep the tanks away from anybody or anywhere where people congregate due to safety reasons. Now, outside is a little bit different than inside. Outside, you have the air that freely moves around so you don't have to worry about safety as much with respect to the gas building up or accumulating in a certain area. Inside, that's definitely a concern. So what would you do in this situation as an example? You would first mount your CO2 jet machines up along underneath the, wherever you're gonna to wanna to mount them. These ones particularly are mounted under the LED screens and they have a couple other ones that are mounted on the stage or in front of the DJ booth that point upwards. Then you have your CO2 lines. The CO2 lines themselves run to the tank farm, which we call it a tank farm or accumulation of tanks. Those tanks are gonna be where the brown boxes are on either side of the marquee symbol. And of course, there's another one that's in the back, the far corner. That one services the tanks for all the CO2 jets and CO2 valves that are outside along these posts. So two different areas, but one thing that you wanna be concerned about and make sure that you're aware of this is that when you're running lines outside, you have a hotter temperature outside the CO2 is gonna cool down faster. If it's liquid nitrogen, it's gonna cool down faster. That could be a concern, and you're gonna not only be wasting product, but it's also gonna heat up the lines. So you wanna take that into consideration when you're mounting your system. You wanna make sure that the system is insulated. There's a couple of tricks for the trade for that. Can't give away all the tricks on this video, but I can advise you on what to do and how to set these cryo systems up. Okay, so you probably ask, CO2 jets versus handheld cryo guns, what's the difference? Well, in very general, and in quick explanation, the difference is this. Your CO2 jet machines are gonna be mounted, if you will, up along the LED walls. And of course, you're gonna have some along each one of these posts here, as you see in this particular setting. We're at Marquee in Vegas, and that's how they have them here. Well, the CO2 cryo gun, or handheld cryo gun as they're called, CO2 cannons, that is gonna be behind the DJ booth, and the DJ is going to be the one that has the handheld cryo gun and actually shoot the cryo gun out amongst the crowd. And the biggest difference there is one of them's handheld, the other one's not, as you're well aware of. So when we're talking about CO2 jets in general, CO2 jets for nightclubs, this is where you would mount the jets for a nightclub. You're gonna wanna mount them where the people are going to be at. Out here, there's a lot of people that congregate in this middle area, hence why they have CO2 jets mounted where they're mounted to spray down or shoot down to where the crowd is. Of course, on the far end there in the video, you see the LED screens. There's some CO2 jets that are mounted there and those ones come directly out. People congregate in front of the DJ, so that's why those jets would be mounted where they are there. So if you're wondering, where would you mount a CO2 jet machine or CO2 jets in a nightclub? That's where you would mount them in the nightclub. You don't wanna put them in some random corner or off to the side where nobody's really gonna be congregating at. Might look good, but remember, it costs you money. 
Okay, I wanna cover a little bit of the terminology here. A lot of people call these CO2 blaster systems or CO2 fog cannons. They're all relevant to the same thing and I get what you mean. And of course, we just want to encompass that here so that you're aware of this. Now, specifically with CO2 jets for nightclubs or handheld cryo guns, as I mentioned earlier on the video or maybe later in the video, depending how we organize this, the handheld cryo guns or handheld CO2 cannons are actually gonna be behind the DJ booth. There's no use for them really out in public like this or out where the crowd is. This is where you're gonna have your CO2 jet machines actually mounted. Now those machines themselves can come in a few different variances. Love those sirens in the background, by the way. Now. The LED CO2 cannons would be a good addition. However, my personal recommendation, I wouldn't put those where the LED screens are because the LED screens put off a lot of light. So really you're not gonna get any use for LED CO2 cannons in that area right there. Where the best use for an LED CO2 cannon is, is if you follow me over this way, we're gonna kinda talk about these sections over here. You see some lights that are over here. There's also some CO2 valves uh, that are mounted there called CO2 jet machines as well, but those are really a valve and a nozzle. The best place for an LED CO2 cannon would be along those posts. The reason why is when it starts to get dark like this or even darker, that LED will actually light those up. If you wanna go cheap and you don't wanna actually buy an LED CO2 cannon, well, guess what? You can make your own by simply putting a light up like that, LED light, and have a uh, CO2 jet or CO2 valve with a nozzle up there as well. So bonus tip, don't wanna undersell you, don't wanna oversell you, just wanna be real specific here and transparent with what you can do, and that is the difference. So when you're looking for a CO2 fog cannon, that encompasses these. When you're looking for a CO2 blaster system, well, yeah, the blaster, that's exactly what we're talking about in this video. Cryo system, cryo stage effects. Let's go on to the next section. So. Continuing forward on how a cryo system or how a CO2 special effects system is set up, I just want to kind of beat a dead horse with this. I'll just be transparent. Now why? There is a couple of different ways. Earlier on the video, I did talk about how you can mount the individual jets and where the hoses need to go and all that good stuff. Well, the thing is this, the questions that arise from this type of setup are, how many tanks do I put on the system? How do I mount the jets? How do I connect the jets to the certain amount of tanks? Well, that's where we cover the expertise in that. There's multiple different ways to do this, but I can tell you what, the majority of the companies are gonna do it wrong because they don't take in the factor how that system is working. When you go from tank to CO2 jet itself, you have a flow. Where is the path of least resistance? Where is the most restrictive part of the flow? When you take those two things into consideration, you have the most efficiently designed system to give you the best output for your nightclub or for your venue, whatever you wanna use these for. And of course, the best and most efficient way to do the system while spending the least amount of money. Those are more important factors because who wants to spend more money than spending a lot of money, right? So when you're setting up the system, you can do multiple tanks on the one line. There's a way to do that. You can set up multiple jets on one line. There is a very specific way to do that. We cover this when we do our quotes. And of course, I can't give you everything in this video, but I can tell you this. When it's done wrong, you're going to end up with a couple of problems. Hypothetical here, if you have four jets along the front of your stage and you have them all routed and connected together with a tank on one end or multiple tanks on one end, path of least resistance, that first jet is gonna get the most output. The jet at the end is gonna get the least. It's going to not look cosmetically appealing or aesthetically appealing, whatever, you get the point. You want it to look right. That's the whole purpose of the effect. And if you're spending the money, you wanna make sure that it's done correctly. You can't put a tank at the other end. However, it may not be suited to be able to be done that way. Therefore, you might wanna connect multiple tanks to one line to one jet. When you do that, are all tanks on at the same time? Are all tanks off at the same time? You wouldn't get a jet that works if that was the case. However, do you turn each one on and off? That's where we come in as experts and we can advise you on exactly what to do. Again, don't wanna give everything away here because then you would just go build your system yourself. But I do wanna let you know that we do know what we're talking about, but that's really not the most important thing. I wanna advise you and give you the tools so that when you have a nightclub, when you have a venue, when you wanna do your CO2, you know what the parameters are and what the capabilities of a company like us is so that you can make the appropriate decisions and requests to get your 
cryo system built. Okay, so we're gonna be talking about inside versus outside. What's the difference other than the fact that this is inside and either you're going to see or you have already seen outside. The major differences are a couple of things. Safety, the atmosphere, and of course, the way the effect is going to look. And I'm gonna to touch on those three things very quickly. So safety, we've talked about safety or we will talk about safety. Inside, safety is a little bit more a concern because you have a constricted area and you only have so much space for air to come in and to go out. Outside, you're open to the public and it's open to the atmosphere at large. And of course, you don't really have to worry about that. Now, what you do have to worry about outside more than inside is the wind. The wind is going to affect things tremendously. Take that into consideration. And more importantly, the sun. The sun and the heat are going to be affecting things as well because the sun is going to be beating down on your hoses, on your CO2 jets, on whatever you have there, and the sun is going to affect that. So take that into consideration when you're designing the systems. Now, obviously inside you can control the light and the atmosphere more so than you can outside. Another thing to take into consideration. Now, with humidity and with atmosphere, Wind was one thing, humidity is another. Inside, even if you have a low humidity environment, if the doors close and you're not putting a lot of air in or coming out in the effect of having doors wide open, when people come in here, they're gonna be sweating, they're gonna be getting nasty, and of course, they're gonna be letting off humidity, and that's something that is gonna be good for you and your effect. Outside, you're not gonna have that. So that is something that you have to worry about as well. Okay, so there's two basic systems that come into play when you want a cryo system in your venue. You have a liquid CO2 system or a liquid nitrogen system. Some of the factors you need to take into play and consideration when you're picking the right system. And of course we can help design that and advise you on it. But more importantly, a couple of things. Is CO2 allowed in your area? What is the fire marshal going to say? And more importantly, what's the humidity like? Humidity plays a huge part in any special effects system. Low humidity, you're probably going to want to go with a liquid nitrogen system. If there's great humidity in areas that have high humidity, then you're probably going to want to go with a liquid CO2 system because that system is going to be a better cost option as all the way around. The system itself and also the gas which is the consumable and the reoccurring cost. So when you're looking at the two different systems, they each have their own specifications and of course requirements. More or less, both systems are gonna need some type of monitoring inside that is going to be activated if the system dumps all the product out. You wanna make sure that the patrons are safe and that patrons basically can still breathe if there's a malfunction. Some of these systems also include a evac system, uh, not only an evac system and, and type of setup for the, the crowd themselves, but an evac system for the, the CO2 or the liquid nitrogen to get it out of the building. That ties in with some of the HVAC. It might tie in with some other uh, operational systems and monitoring systems that are special, specific to your area and your venue per the fire department. Some of these systems interface with the actual fire system. Some of them don't. Just depends on the area. Now, more importantly, the difference between these two systems, liquid nitrogen and CO2, is the fact that you're going to get a different output with each one. CO2 displaces oxygen at a lot higher rate than liquid nitrogen does. Liquid nitrogen comes in and yes, it displaces oxygen, but not as much as CO2 because CO2 really displaces it. Liquid nitrogen just fills the area. Don't wanna get into the specifics here, but they do have their own monitoring systems and they are very important to take into consideration. So now one of the most important parts about any cryo system or cryo stage effects system or just CO2 special effects, you get the point. The most important part is safety. So safety is a huge concern and the reason why is this. You need to have a couple of measures in place when you have a system in your venue like this. You need to have a monitoring system that monitors the air quality and it monitors the PPM of any gas that's in the area. And of course, you wanna make sure that the nozzles or the CO2 jet machines are mounted away from anybody that's going to be in close contact with them. So for instance, if you had some that were mounted on the stage back there, that part of the stage roped off so that nobody can stick their hand over it and actually touch it. Obviously something in here, you'd have these mounted up at the top, spring down. That would be something that wouldn't really affect anybody because it is at least 10 to 20 feet away from any person or anybody's face. So you don't have to worry about anybody freezing or any malfunctions, at least with the spraying at that point. Now, a couple of other things, when the tanks are stored in that area where the tanks are stored, you need to make sure that that area is closely monitored with a type of system. And of course, uh, a monitoring system for air quality and of course the PPMs to check the gas 
a mount in that room and an evac system touched on this on another part of the video but the evac system is going to clear that room in the event that that tank dumps that there is a malfunction and the tank leaks or anything like that you have to have safety and fire departments want safety first everybody should want safety first that's the most important part and i'll tell you what on some of these theme parks they spend just as much or more on the safety system than they do on the actual special effects system. That shows you how much safety is valued. Everybody should value it. However, not everybody does, but I do wanna to touch on that point here. So with that said, when you're monitoring some systems, you have to have monitors around the room. Maybe those monitors are in the walls, maybe they're in different areas. You can decide that. We can just advise on what needs to be and where it needs to be so that you can make the right determination with your system. So now diving in a little bit deeper on the safety that's involved with some of these systems, again, where our specialty is, is actually conducting this and handling this for you. But some of the main pointers that I want to address on this video are this. When you have the safety system put in place and you're designing a cryo system for your venue you want to look at a couple of different things your hazardous materials plan that's something that's going to need to be in place you're interfacing with the fire department so you need to run specific permits this is a hazardous material liquid nitrogen hazardous liquid co2 hazardous gas in either one of those hazardous hazardous is the key point here so your hvac system how much air is coming into the system versus or sorry how much air is coming into the venue versus how much airflow is going out when you put people in there that displaces some of the area you have a smaller area in a sense where there's a lot less room for air to be moving around you have to take that into consideration so your hvac system needs to do the job some of these nightclubs they're running hvac like crazy they have a ton of ac units but it's still not enough air coming into the venue to actually have airflow going out and to be able to make it a safe environment for some of these cryo systems so now a couple other things to look at you have environmental testing that's something that we conduct and you need to have environmental testing before you even put one of these systems in or when you put the system in and before you open to the public the environmental testing is going to basically say this is the air quality right now this is the air quality when the system is at full capacity this is the air quality when the system has a malfunction and it just dumps that's something that you need to be aware of and you need to have those tests oxygen monitoring we breathe oxygen okay i mentioned that these gases displace oxygen if that oxygen is not there to breathe there's a problem okay you're breathing about 450 350 to 450 ppm of co2 in the air right now when you dump one of these systems out that can go up to 1800 2000 3000 osha they have limits you have to make sure that everything is set and you have to make sure safety is number one so continuing forward you have your fire uh, your fire department uh, inspection they're going to inspect they're going to be issuing a permit you also have your evac plan which i mentioned evacuation plan not only for the people but also for the air how are you going to evacuate all that air in the worst case scenario and of course your fire system some of these interface with the fire systems and what that means is that if these gas systems if they dump too much gas in there and the monitors pick up that the air quality is poor and that it would be a problem for people breathing that would automatically interface with the fire system that lets the fire department know that there's a problem sets off the fire alarm Arms, evacuates the buildings some of those go that intricate where they do that others they do not they're separate from the fire system and they just let you know that you need to shut it down that is something that we will handle that's what happens when you book a system and you want to get a quota system with us and last but not least your monitoring and, and uh, your monitoring integration that's what I was just talking about on the video how is it going to be integrated with what systems all of this is part of safety and that's something that you need to be aware of last but not least you have the look the look of what you want which is your special effects system and of course inside versus outside is going to give you different looks light is going to be different the wind and the atmosphere is going to be different and of course when the people are perspirating and your air conditioning is going well that's all inside it's going to be totally different outside so your effect is going to look different 
and you need to take that into consideration when you're designing a cryo system for your venue. Just make sure that you see the difference and we'll throw some videos on here so you can see what inside looks like versus outside. And more importantly, what location are you at? We're in Vegas right now, clearly. However, Vegas is barely any humidity, so you have to do a lot of extra details to make the system function and look properly. Functionality is one thing, but look a whole different ball game as opposed to somewhere like San Diego or somewhere like Florida where it's high humidity. Those are things you need to take into consideration. And more importantly, where are your tanks stored? If it's outside, you need the tank stored inside a cabinet somewhere that's insulated so that at least you can keep it somewhat isolated from the outside temperature. Whereas inside, you can pretty much put the tanks anywhere because inside it's gonna be cool anyways. Just a couple of factors and items to look at when you're looking at a system inside, a cryo system inside versus outside. Awesome, so thanks guys for watching this video. Truly appreciate it. Hope this was very informative on cryo systems and cryo special effects, CO2 special effects, whatever you wanna call it. But this gave you a guideline and a baseline of some of the factors that go into designing cryo systems. So when you have a system of your needs and you want some information, this can be a good staple of a video to look at and actually understand it a little bit better. So this covered a series of different topics here, safety inside and outside, handheld cryo guns versus uh, CO2 jets, things like that. I don't have to recoup anything like that because you already watched the video, but thank you for watching. I'm Chris with CryoFX. Do me a favor, smash that like button, and of course hit the subscribe button for more videos that are informative just like this. And if you don't, well, I'm gonna guilt trip you if you don't, so just hit the like button. <laughs> Anyways, I'm Chris with CryoFX. Until next time, we'll see you on the flip side.